We're going to talk about video cameras and in particular the um, rotating uh, video heads that they use. Uh, I recently obtained a couple of these Panasonic Super VHS camcorders. Uh, this one that you can see on the screen now is a Panasonic uh, NV-S70 uh, and I've also got um, an NV-S 85B which is uh, currently in a somewhat disassembled state. These are reasonable quality machines from the mid 1990s and being super VHS they have a far greater resolution than uh, a typical VHS C camcorder would. The only trouble is both this one that's, out, that's just come today which I got for a couple of pounds on eBay uh, and the other one which uh, I got the other week uh, the um, video cassette mechanism doesn't work properly. Uh, the rest of the camera works fine uh, on both of them. Uh, the um, CCD camera works fine, the focusing, the microphones, uh, the video equipment, the, the uh, cathode ray tube viewfinder, they both have cathode ray tube viewfinders, they're these little half inch, half inch things, uh, they both work perfectly and uh, I've never had one of these CRT viewfinders before and I've always wanted one so uh, these will be worth having just for those I'd imagine but uh, it'd be nice to use them as camcorders um, except that the uh, video cassette mechanism doesn't work. Now I say it doesn't work, um, it actually does work it just doesn't work properly uh, I've got some video clips that I'll show you shortly. Uh, it loads the tape fine. Basically the head drum makes a real racket and doesn't run smoothly. Apart from that it does work. But it's no good if the uh, if it can't play the video steadily and if, if it makes an awful lot of noise. So in this video I've disassembled one of the head drums so I'll show you that uh, the insides of, of the head drum and how it works and how it's put together. Uh, and if anyone can offer any suggestions on how to fix them, I'd, I'd be very grateful. In this clip I've got the Panasonic uh, S85B, which is the uh, slightly higher end version. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate uh, loading a tape and you'll see the amount of noise it makes. It starts off fairly quietly, but then it, it starts making a real racket. And here is when the noise is starting. And then basically it never shuts up. But here it is after it's been running a little while and now we'll eject the tape so that you can hear the difference. Uh, I've now got the camera somewhat disassembled and you can see the mechanism a heck of a lot clearer.
I'm now going to show the teardown of the head drum. Uh, I don't think these are intended to be dismantled or repaired, but uh, I think they're intended to be replaced if, if they fail, and it's the whole thing that has to be replaced. Uh, according to the Panasonic service manual, uh, you can't just replace part of it, you're supposed to replace the whole thing. Now in this photograph I've laid out the various components of it and on, on the bottom uh, basically heads uh, work as transformers. Uh, you have the uh, heads which are spinning on a, a spinning round piece uh, and then the signal is uh, transferred to the uh, fixed connector by means of uh, a transformer which is uh, spinning round. Uh, now you can see on the left hand side of the screen is the um, uh, the base of the head uh, and part of, of the uh, transformer and that uh, that is the bit that connects into the uh, into the video camera and and here we can see a much greater closer up of, of that. Uh, the next part is the uh, motor and this appears to be a DC brushless motor now such motors have uh, an, an array of coils and uh, a spinning magnet sitting above them. Now in this case it doesn't have a it doesn't have a traditional uh, arrangement of copper wire co coils. The, co the coils are actually uh, printed on the on a piece of uh, PCB, uh, which I've not seen before. So I'm, I'm assuming it's probably common in in this kind of equipment. Uh, so we can just have a uh, in here you can see uh, a close up of that uh, if we zoom in you can see the um, individual coils on on the uh, PCB and the magnet is the piece that's uh, sitting on the left hand side in this photo and that uh, actually screws onto the remainder of the head and, and makes the whole thing spin now the third item that you can see on, on the screen, and this this is the uh, awkward bit for me, uh, that's part of that's the uh, second part of the transformer mechanism. Uh, here's a close up of the of the actual heads on the uh, head drum. Uh, you can see the metal pads uh, on the bottom of each of the heads, and they make contact with the little uh, spring terminals on this uh, transformer mechanism. And then that connects the uh, individual heads up to uh, up to all those transformer coils, and that's then that then sits on top of the uh, fixed coils that we saw earlier, and uh, it spins round. Uh, now this piece spins round with the actual heads, so the heads are always connected to the uh, to the coils, and uh, the, the co those coils then spin around the other coils. Now here's the uh, head mechanism. Uh, the uh, motor is screwed into the uh, bottom piece. Uh, clearly the issue that was causing the noise is some uh, friction somewhere. Uh, but we've got to try and figure out where that's coming from. Uh, now this uh, head drum sits on top of this shaft here. Like that and you and it spins nice and freely. You can see that it spins nice and freely. There's uh, very very little friction at all. That's that's pretty much what you'd expect. So there's nothing wrong with this bearing here. I think the issue is with this transformer mechanism. But basically this has to sit on here and this has to spin round with the heads and you can see in here that if we just spin that round freely like that there's way too much friction if I pull it out a bit it might spin better but That basically just doesn't spin freely and I think that's where the problem is and I really don't have a clue what we can do about it.